there's a lot of shifting happening right now within this year of 2024 and beyond. A lot of people are experiencing things with jobs. You know, we're entering, we're on another grid. We're on another timeline in this moment. And it sounds like that happened for you, you know, a little bit earlier. And it's amazing how once you made that decision as I'm going to let go of this so that I can make more space for what is in front of us and the timeline that you and your wife are supposed to be on now with having this beautiful space of the healing environment, but it got loud. It seems like it got loud, like with the COVID, your lung collapse, all this. What would you say to somebody who's listening to this podcast right now who's like, this is really speaking to me, but they still have a fear of the unknown around taking that leap and doing what's necessary, doing what their intuition, which is your guided system that's 100% accurate, Lynn knows this, y'all, that's telling them move forward and they keep hesitating. What would you say from someone who message got so loud, you experienced all that, and now this is where you both have arrived and the lives that you all have truly supported in transforming that have literally graced the healing environment, the lovely events that you've had there. What would you say to that person? So I, I, I tell you this, we all who are, who are, who, because we signed up for this, this uh, incarnation and this earth plane of existence during this time, because this time of shifting, this is a, a time of incredible shifting for everyone. And so uh, we are the, the, the folks that are that have signed up to, to be part of the cleanup crew. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we've signed up to help everybody else shift, but we have to shift too. And, mm -hmm. and one of the things, uh, so that means that we've signed up for a particular purpose. Yeah. And, and, and so the bells get rung subtly the bells get rung louder and then if we don't listen spirit chokes you <laughs> spirit surely honey spirit and, and, look, and, and, i like to say it's true screaming in your face got snot yeah, and, and drool and, hanging out yeah. and it's like <laughs> you yeah. you it chokes you and, and and here here's the irony of that zen i didn't listen that time so that happened in August of 2021, right? And I came back to work three months later. And, and by December of 2021, we had opened up the uh, soft opening of the healing, healing environment. Then 2022, January, we had a grand opening, right? And so, uh, and so the beginning of January, I had told my boss, I'm going to work all of 2022. I'm going to quit at the end of the year because, because I've got this, this schedule in my mind because mm -hmm. I still have this control. Mm -hmm. I have this divine masculine that I that, that has that has served me well for for fifty something years, right? And so mm -hmm. I'm hell, I'm not going to leave it now. And so <laughs> I so so I, I told him I said I'm going to quit at the end of the year because my wife and I have this business, and, and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going I'm to step into my purpose gradually. So he said gradually, yeah. yeah. So January, February, March, I mean, all the months preceding. Now, I'm, I'm, I was very successful at my job. I managed to use my blessed gifts to help people and, and, and get promoted in the company. I mean, that's what. But but when, you, when you're here for a purpose, you can't do both. You, you cannot do both. And so really as, the months, as the months passed, I grew increasingly angry about the job that I used to love. Mm. And and. And it was July of 2022. I lost my voice for two weeks. I couldn't Throat speak chakra. at all. Throat chakra. I couldn't speak at all. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it was a time when I had to go through workshop events and I had to be online, had to talk. I couldn't talk for two weeks. And, and so the spirit was choking me again, literally. Right? And so it was the first week of August, the anniversary of me getting in the hospital. Wow. I'm sitting here at this desk 
And my boss uh, at that time, he gives me another duty to add on to the list of duties that I'm already doing because I'm good at my job. Mm-hmm. So I do I do everything that everybody else can't do. Mm-hmm. So I have this long list of stuff. And so I texted back to him. I said, I said, listen, I can't do all of these. I said, we're going to have to throw something out. And then he said, well, let's in our next one-on-one, let's talk about it. And you want you to make a list and prioritize the list. And we'll talk about the things that you can't do. Now, th- that's that's what a boss should say. Mm-hmm. Right? 1,000%, yeah. I lost it. I lost it. I, I sat here. I started cursing. Tears were running down my, my street. I mean, I said, I can't do this. Jamaica was upstairs in the master bedroom with my grandson. I lay laying on the bed. I'm walking in there and tears were flowing down. And I said, baby, I, baby, I can't do this anymore. It was it. And you know Jamaica. Mm-hmm. She's pragmatic. She says, she looks at me, she says, baby, you said that a year ago. So right then, we talked about finances, 401ks, all of that stuff. We talked about all of that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that, when it, it was at that point where I had to release the fear. And so I gave my company three weeks because it was like, it's good. Put to, to the rest, to the end of August, I gave them to the end of August to, to really get more people to hand off all of this stuff because, because one person can't take over what I was doing. And so at the end of August, I left. And it was right then when I released all of the energy that no longer serves me and I replaced it. So from the end of August till now, I've had the greatest awakening and the greatest opening of activation that I've had in 10 years. Wow. And, and it's, it's amazing what I say, uh, because when you're here for a purpose, you're here for a purpose. And, 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 and so you have to understand that you signed up to do this. Whether you're in this earthly plane of existence and you're dealing with everyday challenges and everything else, reality is you signed up for this. And so when it struck me and I lost my voice for two weeks and I'm like, this is what I'm not supposed to be doing. And, and all it took was an arbitrary note back from him and I lost it. But I had, I had, I, I had sort of gain, I was angry, angrier, angrier, angrier. And I no longer love the job that would serve me well. I love calibration. I love working for NASA. I love doing all of this technical stuff. I hated it. So that's when I had to walk away and, and I had to understand who I was. And that's when everything started happening. That's when everything started happening. And, and it was January of 2023. I had a numerology uh, reading from a numerologist, right? And it was three days, it was three days before my birthday, right? In January. And he talked about, and and and, and so he he told me about, you know, I already knew that I was a I was a master number, I was a master eleven, all of that. So we, we talked about everything involved around that. And guess what he brought up? He says. Now it's time for you to write your book. There it is again. Writing that book. Yeah. And so I said, okay. And and then he said, he he said, just start writing. And he said, and he gave me some 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 tips and and suggestions of a recorder or anything else. And so, but I have been an absolutely great creative writer since high school. Since when I, my college and my first when I, my, my college courses, I, I've been an absolutely phenomenal creative writer. That's one of my gifts. And so, um, and so once he said that, I'm like, okay. So after every day in meditation, every morning, I tap in and I knew that today was a writing day. And I would sit down at this at this desk and start writing. And, and I knew where to start. I knew I needed to start at four years old at the funeral of my grandfather, because I remember that vividly. I remember my grandfather's funeral when I was four years old. And I remember what I, what I asked my mom and I said, that's pivotal. And so I started remembering things in details that I'm like, wow, 
I remember all of this. And, and it took me probably four weeks from the day I started to the day I finished to write that book. And I was done. And, and it was, and I, I would tell Jamaica, today's a writing day. And I knew it was a writing day after meditation. And I would sit down and I would write all day, chapters, and then I would just write. And then I would and I would wait two or three days. And then all of a sudden out of my meditation, I, I, I know today's a writing day. And, and, I, and I would just surrender to it. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I absolutely knew what I, I you know, I was, I was vulnerable. I, I was honest. I told my story. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything. And Your full story. My full story. Full story from beginning to yeah. end. Like, I just want to add that because mastering all that I am, like it literally goes from the very beginning all the way till the present. And that's what I love so much about the book. It's not giving you, oh, these are the four steps and mastering all that you are and all this. It's like, no, I want you to literally read my journey and all of the things that I experienced, especially in chapter five, when you were talking about your father. And one of my questions to you is this, how did the perception of your father change after that incident? happen because beforehand you wanted to be like your dad right like and I also want you to answer that too like what was it we all want to be like our parents but what was it about your father that was so grand at that time and then when that incident occurred and y'all gotta read the book to see the incident okay that occurred that's a big shift that goes from putting your father on a pedestal to all of a sudden, oh, I really don't care for you like that. Like you're, like you're no longer on that pedestal for me. Like I know you're my father, but my respect for you has shifted. Yeah, I, th- I think and one of the things that we've got to talk about is, and my family was a representative of it because my mom, uh, my mom is dark skinned. Mm-hmm. Okay. And my dad is my complexion. Mm-hmm. And and my, my younger brother is the is the color of my mom. Mm-hmm. And my sister is the color of me and my dad, right? But she's the only girl. So I'm the middle kid. And I and I have his name. Mm-hmm. And and so uh from the time that I was born, mm-hmm. I wanted to be like him. From the time uh I can remember you know, he he he'd be in the bathroom shaving, and I'd be next to him, uh, you know, you know, mimicking shaving, and 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 just because I wanted to be like him. But as I grew of myself, and I realized that I was more like my mom and less like my dad, because my dad was a type of person that was a worldly guy. He was out there. He was he was very popular, you know. He would he would go in, you know. He'd work. He'd, he'd have two jobs. He worked at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and then he worked at uh, he he did part time security at a department store. And he'd walk in his plain clothes, and he get dressed up, you know, walking through the store like you know like like you 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 dressed up looking for a suit or looking for whatever. But but he you know he that's what he did. And then he he was he was very popular with the with the females at the counters and all of that. So uh, I remember I'd I'd, I'd worked at a grocery store, Kroger's, and it was almost it was in the same complex. And I would and I would walk over there and I'd see him and he would he just be in his element. Right. But when he came home, he was different. He was always different. And uh, I didn't realize why he was different. I know now. But but and and I and, and I embrace and accept why he was different. But but he was a different guy out there. And, and the more that I saw him in his element, the more I, I'm thinking, excuse me, the language, this is bullshit. And, and, and I said, freely. we're about speaking freely. Yeah. And, and, and I said, this is bullshit. And, and I'm like, this, this, this is not the guy. This is not the man. And, 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 then, and then it doesn't hurt, doesn't help things when your mom said you just like your daddy. That's that 
pre-programmed DNA that's environmental affects your DNA that says, you know, because you hear it and you say, you're just like your dad. But I wasn't. I wasn't even close to being on it. I was in the basement all the time learning how to draw. My mom was an artist. I was in the basement uh, singing all the time. My mom was a classical singer. I was in the basement doing all of that because I was just like her. And But, but my mom had an anger about her that I didn't, I didn't resonate with. And so, but so it's like, well, I got to be like him. And, and, and everybody, you know, back then you, you got that barriers of, of, of skin complexion and it's still going on. It's still going on today. It still happens it very, today. It sure it's, does. It's, it's, it was very pervasive in our family and, and on my mom's side and on my dad's side, because my dad's side, they were lighter. And on my mom's side, all my mom, they were darker. And, and so there was this, this antagonistic divide between them. And you can feel it. It was palpable. And, and so, uh, and so uh, when I look like him, I have his name and all of that. But when he, when he had that conversation my junior year in the chapter and I talked about it, and, and I knew he was lying. I knew he was lying. But I just said, okay. You know, because if they were going to get divorced and that that was going to be the, the end of it, and better yet, because he was abusive. You know, he was, you know, he, he did some things in the household and all of that stuff, abusive and domestic violence and all of that. All of that was pervasive. But when I uh, but when that happened and then what happened the next day. After that is what realized that I needed to. I developed an anger about him. And I hated him. And uh, I hated him with the with the passion, because mm -hmm. I am not like you. I'm not a player. I don't. I don't. You know, uh, I didn't have my first girlfriend until I was 18 years old. And and so I, that that shit that wasn't me. Yeah. And I was I was I was I was an introvert. You know, it took a lot for me to to, to muster up the, the the courage to even talk to a female, let alone. But 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 he, what he did, I mean, they just. They just came to him. Yeah. You know, and uh, and so uh and so that's when I started to develop my own character. And it was a false character because I developed something that that allowed me to 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 cover up the trauma that I didn't want to deal with. And and but eventually we are the covers have to come off. Mm -hmm. And 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 you have to you have to face that trauma. And you have to deal with that trauma, and I had to deal with that trauma, and uh, but it took a hell of a lot to me to deal with it because it's so funny when I when I turned thirty eight is when is when stuff started turning on right, and I and I'm and I'm working for NASA, and I'm you know going to the gym and I'm working out, and this yoga instructor I knew her I'd been in Florida for seven and a half years, and and so she's. She was a yoga instructor there for, for a time there. And then all of a sudden, she's, I guess her spirit said it was time to talk to Lynn. And then she she and I struck up a rapport, started talking. And then, uh, you know, me back then, you know, I, I wanted to increase the probability of women coming up to me. So I started working out. <laughs> hey, it worked. <laughs> it worked. Fast. It worked. So, so, so listen, that, that, that tipped the scales like, I'm, it did, and and so I, I was, and I competed in bodybuilding tournaments and all of that back then. So oh, you went like, all the way. Oh, you absolutely. wow! You didn't just I work was, out. You did the bodybuilding tournaments because yeah. I read that. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that about yeah. Lynn. Oh yeah, I, I I went knee deep in. I got my trophies in the garage right here. So they they over here in the garage. But but yeah, and so I did I did all of that, and uh, and so when she came up to me. And she started talking, and all of a sudden she, she kissed me on the lips out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the hell was up with this? But, but it intrigued me. That probability worked in your favor. Probability. Mission and so accomplished. She, <laughs> and so she she suggested that I take a yoga class. I ain't took it, I ain't never took a yoga class <laughs> up till then. Right. And so I took a class, and then she wanted, and it was like, okay, you know, she during the week she can come over to the house and she came over to my apartment. And that's when she struck up and started telling me things about me. She started telling me, you are a healer. I see white light all over you. And, 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 
and she says, you and I were were known each other in a past life in Egypt. And I'm thinking, the hell? Because I'm, I grew up Baptist. I don't know nothing exactly. about Exactly. Nothing. And I was going to ask you, so you hearing this, what was your initial thought? Because you had not arrived yet with the consciousness that you have now. So did you think she was she was she's talking out of her mind. What were you thinking at that you time? Be honest. You be yeah. honest. Yeah, be all the way honest. She was fine. Oh, so you <laughs> you were into it. You were like, yeah, baby. Let's listen, listen. I'm gonna listen to whatever you got coming because you're fine. You, you coming over two two times a week? We 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 swinging off the chandeliers. Listen, I'm I'm all for listening to everything that you got to tell me. So. So, but, ladies, ladies but, who are listening so, to this podcast, be, I, let I'm it be known. Real. Let it be known when someone is into you, they are truly all the way yeah. into you, even if they have no idea. Look, I don't know what you into. I don't know what you're talking about. But hey, if this means that we can be present with each other more, I'm in. <laughs> oh, and and I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna keep it real. And, and, and here's what happened, though. As we started seeing each other, stuff started activating in me. Mm. I started feeling energy flowing. I started, she, she, she started giving me books. And she gave me books about, about the soul and everything. And, and I started reading them from, from cover to cover. Mm. And, and, and then, I mean, she started, and we started talking about meditation. And I, I started seeing silhouettes of spirits floating around in my ceiling. Wow. Stuff started happening. And so it made me a believer in it. So the more that we were together, the more that I wanted to know and learn from her. Yeah. And then I took the ball and ran it myself. I, I'm like, okay, you know, she, I would go to Barnes and Noble and that was before the internet. I didn't have a computer. So I'd go to Barnes and Noble and I'd go to the spiritual section and whatever, it resonated when I'd get the book and I'd read it. I'd buy the book and I'd read it. So that's what, and she also told me, funny thing, she says, you're not, you're, you're not going to be with NASA much longer. You know, and, and that was, and, and so, uh, and, but, but it was, it was amazing that, uh, that I, uh, because uh, what it started out was my, my interest in her physically. Mm -hmm. It grew spiritually spiritually and and, and it was and, and then things started happening I, st I started to feel tightness and all that what am i dying i'm like no your body's changing and, 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 and i couldn't and I, and it was like wow and then that's when it started at 38 and it's been it's been moving progressively ever since and and, and so that's when i i knew that I, there was something i didn't know how special or powerful that I am, that I was back then, because I'm 38. What, what do I know? But uh but I tell you what, it 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 it, it took me on a journey that it, that that has been absolutely amazing. And I wouldn't change one bit, one one single bit of it for for anything. What was that timeline when she had stated you won't be working for NASA too much longer and then when you left, what was that timeline? It was about a year, about a year and a half, right? And, and say that one more time. Say that one more. It was about a year and a half, and um, and then so and I'm like, okay, well, because I love my job, but uh, but one day NASA said, you know, with cuts and everything, you know, we're not gonna, you know, we're, we're gonna we're, we don't need you anymore, and I'm like, I'm like oh, do, and so uh, and so I went to the library, and I started putting in for jobs. And within a week, I got an interview in Orlando, the home office in Orlando, and um, and I interviewed because I was I was smart. I was a metrologist. I knew I, I knew my shit. And and so when I interviewed them, they were like, "We need you immediately," but it's in Chicago. And so I remember driving to Chicago. It was like minus fifteen below, and I had a jacket because I because I'm living in Florida. I have no coat, and I'm like, "What the hell?" And, yeah. and so, but, but it was then that I, that I started to understand what I needed to do. And, and I didn't stop there. I started, you know, uh, I bought, I bought, I bought my first computer 
you know, online dating was was in his infancy, so not a whole lot of women have pictures. <laughs> so so oh, I had God. to. Y'all had to read the profile. There, there was no swipe left or swipe light, swipe right. It was like, and then the pictures were very grainy, so you really couldn't see how they looked. And so there was a lot of, so I was trying to use my intuition. Intuition, one thousand percent. Because I knew that the the woman that I needed to meet was gonna take me to the next level. And I yeah. finally, and, and I got a couple a couple times I was like, ah, that didn't work. And so just I focused in, and it was the. Teacher for the real. That's what was her title on, on the profile. And I'm like, that's her. I knew it. And we were together for about a year, something year, year and a half or something like that. And then because she had just gotten a divorce and I was the first person that she dated after the divorce. And so she still had her trauma. And that's why we didn't, we didn't last because I started picking up things that she needed to heal from. But it was amazing that uh that she taught me so much and that's when the 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 freaky stuff started happening that's when the 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 scary scary shit started happening when i dated her because i thought because I'm, I'm that guy that okay i'm a science guy i need i need to be proven things well i got i got i got proven a lot and and, and i and i got in that experience. I I'll share one with you, right? Please and do, because so, that was my next question. Was which specific event or challenge had the biggest impact on your journey? Because you speak on so many situations, experiences, challenges, difficulties that took place in your life. That's why you all, you got to get this book. You got to get this book because when you read this book, you discover that you're, tr you're truly not alone in this journey. Yeah. All of us, it, that's what it is. It is a journey and we're all experiencing, even though it may look highlighted on social media and on Instagram, we all are on this journey of truly mastering all that we are, and we will be on this journey until the day we transition and enter into another life. Yes, most definitely, most definitely. And 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 you have help in more ways that you even realize. And so much is happening in the background. And you may think that you are stagnant, but it's so much is happening to you in the background that is that is moving you forward. But our ability is that our, our challenge is we got to get out of our own way and we have to be patient. We have to be still because there are certain certain times where we have to be still. Talk about allow, that stillness. Yeah. And allow our bodies to adjust, allow us to, to regenerate, to get the rest. If we're feeling tired a lot, that's us getting our DNA upgrade, going to reprogramming. That takes a lot of our avatar bodies. And so we have to understand what we're going through. There's a whole lot happening in the background. In a holistic so, way, in a yes. holistic way, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, all of it has to be recalibrated. You're not able to keep one piece of what you were doing. All of it has to yeah. shift. Yes, most definitely. So I'll share one with you, right? So And, and so we had started talking about some, because uh, I knew that she was an empath or a psychic, so we had started really connecting at a, at a close level. And uh, when, when it got to a point where we were really comfortable with each other, she lived. I lived in the suburbs, right? And so she lived in the city. She was a teacher in the city of Chicago. So I had to drive to Chicago on Friday after work, and then I'd stay there over the weekend, and then I'd drive back on Sunday, right? First weekend, I stay there, right? I have to get up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, right? And so, okay. And and I'm I, and to me and you have to understand I I am still that guy I no longer competed but I was rigid about my nutrition I was rigid about my training all of it I was I've been like that and so uh, so I had to get up and use the bathroom well in her bathroom next to the commode there's a window seal and there's a book there there's a book sitting on the window seal and it was about spirit guides consciousness. It was sort of an all-encompassing type of book, right? And so I'm sitting there using the bathroom, and I'm and I start reading the book, right? So that night I have to get up 
five times to use the bathroom. And each time I get up, I pick up the book. Right? Wow. And so and so I didn't get a whole lot of sleep that first night. Saturday night, same thing happens then. I have to get up five times. Now I'm thinking, what did I eat? I'm thinking, so I'm thinking logically. Did I eat something? Exactly. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. You know, excuse my language. I'm, you know, it's like heavy loads that's coming out of me for some <laughs> reason. I'm like, what, what is up with this, right? But each time I sit down, I pick up the book and I read it, right? Okay. Now, Sunday, I'm tired because I ain't got no sleep. You know, in between us going get freaky and everything you'll else. Much, and, and you'll have much energy in you because you were loads were coming out. And it's yeah. so interesting. I just want to say real quick, Lynn, it's so interesting that what was the title of that book before I, I say this? I got well, it. I, I have, she, she texted me the other day. I, I, I'll let you know, but I don't know what the title is because I forgot it's not in my mind. But 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 there is she showed me a picture of it the other day and I still have it. So I will I will I will send that to you. What but was it about? What was it about? It, it was about spirit guides. It was about oh, that's right. You said the spirit guides. Yeah, consciousness, everything. Yeah. So it's it was so about interesting. Everything. I thought that's what you said. I just I, I thought that's what you said. So it's so interesting that you're reading this book about spirit guides and consciousness as you're purging. Yes. <laughs> At the same time. And I didn't know. I didn't know it was purging. I just thought, you know, the hell did I eat? And so I'm driving back on Sunday. Now, now, bear in mind. She 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 did it in a log. She ain't woke up every time I woke up. She ain't done nothing, and it, and I didn't said anything to me. And so, next weekend I drive down. Friday night, same thing happens. Five times, I have to get up and use the bathroom. Each time, I pick up the book. Now 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 my dumb ass ain't said nothing to her. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was there was a there was preventing me from saying something to her. And no, she wasn't supposed to say anything to me. But 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 I'm getting up five times at night. Friday night, Saturday night, same thing happens. Right. And so I'm I'm, I'm exhausted by this time, you know. And so I'm driving back home. I'm just sleeping and getting rest and I had to go to work Monday, all of this stuff. So, okay, next next week, the third weekend I go down, I'm gonna I'm gonna solve this shit. I'm going to fast all day Friday. I'm not going to eat anything. So I'm like, okay, I got this. Right? Friday night, same thing happens. I'm like, until I finish the book, Saturday. And that's when it stopped, when you that's finished when the book. That's that you stopped purging. Yo. That's and and, and 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 I finally mentioned it to her. And she says, quote unquote, they wanted me to place the book there. Now, free will, I have to choose to read the book. And so that's what my, and each time I sat down, I chose to read the book. And, and so, I'm like, okay, I got it. Okay, I'm, I'm here to do something, something, some, something more. Okay, you don't, I don't need any more experiments. I'm good, right? And so we started really getting close and talking about a lot of things and and, and wisdom, her beliefs and my beliefs, and just doing some things, right? It's so funny about and, and everybody that I had, that I had dated, the yoga instructor, and then the teacher. Everybody I dated told me that you need to get back together with your father. Everyone told me, Zen. And I'm angry. And I'm like, fuck, I need to get back with him. How many, how, how many messages? I'm just curious. How many messages did it take of people saying that until you did it? One, two, three. And she was she was the last one. And what was it about that third? Like what what was was it because of the book as well? Because it was expanding your mind 
into shift, like into shifting your perspective in order for you to be able to have, cause you had to have, I mean, that's with what occurred, that's very difficult. And to have harbored that for so long. Yeah. I, I, I think honestly, I was tired of being angry. That's real. Was, that's real. I was, so, I was so tired of being angry. Yeah. And, and, and I remember, uh, because uh, I hadn't sp spoken with him in I don't know, for, for two, three years, and uh, because what he had did before that, I mean, he had did some things, and, and it was, we were off and on since that junior year in high school. And I would, I would, I would be. He had came down. I talk about it in my book. He had came down, you know, in Florida when I was working for NASA, and he, 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 he comes off as this sort of apologetic. You know, I've, I've learned some things. I've gone to counseling. All of this. I mean, he he's like, I'm like, wow, pops, that, that, that's pretty good. And he we sit there all weekend and he's, you know, he, he's 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 we chopping it up, he's talking about. It. And then my brother, my brother is just like my brother was just like him. And so my brother was to travel. My brother traveled a lot. So one my, my brother, what he didn't know is my brother was coming down to see me a couple of weeks after he left. And my brother told me, nah, man, that's not why he went to counseling. He went to counseling that he got arrested. And he pulled out a gun and and he uh, he wasn't honest with you. That was again, and, I, this, and, I, and, and so and so I feel so to add on to what already occurred. I've had moments of okay, I am going to forgive him, but, but but here's what I'll tell your your view, your your listeners and viewers. Yeah, everything that happened to me, yeah, was a hundred percent about me, and zero percent about him. Did y'all hear that? Yeah, that's important. And 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 once I realized that, I was tired of being angry. Yeah. And and can you go more I... into that realization yeah. for everybody? Because people are so quick to project. And to blame, but it really doesn't have anything to do with the other person. You're having that experience for a reason, and there's something that that experience is offering you. Can you just go into that? Yeah, and 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 I was, you know, I I, I had I had been so judgmental about it because I was this this very successful man, and everything that I did, I was successful in my job, I was successful in in in, in the and the personal life and, and all of this stuff. And I, you know, I, I, I hadn't had no, I had any complaints, but every woman that I talked to that I dated says, this is not who you are. This is not, I'm like, what do you mean? I'm, Cause I didn't understand what they were saying. No, in order for you to be who you are, you're going to have to heal from the relationship between your, your, your father and your mother, because that was another story. But, but, but I had to understand that and and I was so angry at him to the point where I remember talking to uh, the teacher, her name is Terry, and, and, and I said, I'm 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 tired of being angry. I'm, I'm and we talk and we would talk about it really intensely and, and personally. And, and I says, I'm 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 tired of being angry. And so I called him up one day and I and I shot the shit out of him because it's like I'm like, I want to come see you. Right? I'm gonna come spend the weekend with you. And, and it was about a four-hour drive from Chicago to Dayton, Ohio. And I drove down, and we spent the weekend sitting in his den. And we cried. We got angry. Uh, he listened. I listened to him. And we left it there. And, and that's when I understood finally understood what they were saying. I was no longer tired. I was tired of being angry. I was like, I didn't want that energy. I didn't want that weight, that density to, to, to weigh me down. I didn't want to worry about that. So I spent the next six months, once a month, six, seven months, once a month, I'd drive down and, and, and chop it up with my pops. And we'd just be sitting in the den and just talking. And just, just, and, and and they didn't know anything what I was doing. They didn't know the journey that I was on. They didn't know anything. I, I think I they think I made the mistake 
of, of mentioning that I was dating a yoga instructor and, and she was a psychic woman, uh, like when I was working for NASA and, and, and they would, they, I got jokes from the family. You know, when, 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 you, when you're in the black family, you get, you, get, you get jokes because all of that stuff, that's demon stuff. So you get, you get people, people joking. So it was then I was like, okay, I, I'm, okay, I need to do this on my own. And so when I would go back home, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't talk to him about stuff. You know, I just, I just understood that I needed to be present and understood, understand who he was. What I found out about my father was something very, 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 very critical because this gift is a genetic gift that gets passed down, right? So somebody in your ancestry, somebody in your lineage, lineage has a portion of the gift. And his mother, my grandmother, had it. He has it. And so what I, so what I found out was, why aren't you that way at the store and, and open? Why aren't you that way at the house? Yeah. Because my mama brought my mama brought other trauma. My mama mm -hmm. brought trauma mm -hmm. from her childhood. And so and so my mom was extremely angry all the time. And he didn't help doing the shit that he was doing, but 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 he was taking in that energy. He he was he was absorbing that energy, and it got so bad for him. He didn't understand that he had a gift. We talk about it now. He's eighty five years old, and we talk about, it. and 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 but but he didn't understand the the absolutely the gift that he had. And so when he that person that he was at the store, that was him. This person at the house, that was somebody else. Because he it was this energy. He couldn't, he couldn't take it. And so he was absorbing all of that negative energy that was pervasive. And I and I, I as an empath, I absorbed it. But I what I wanted to do is I wanted to fix mom. And I wanted to help her. And I wanted to, I wanted to do everything that I possibly could to make her happy. I, I gotten, I gotten, you know bands and music musicians and choirs and everything else where all of my kids my age were, were, in, were having fun. I was doing that shit to, 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 to make my mom happy. And, and so I found out that I needed to understand my own sovereignty because I chose my mom, I chose my dad for that particular reason to understand my own sovereignty, my own freedom, my own voice. No matter what they believe, no matter what they think, you are who you are. You are powerful. You are, the learn, lessons that you learn from them are powerful. And so my dad, we were we were, we were chopping it up, and and uh, and so that's 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 part of the reason why I started to understand that I needed to be this person that that understood the trauma that I acquired, that I created from my dad and from my mom, understood who I was. Now, I, I'm still an introvert and uh, an introvert back then. So, so I didn't understand that for me, walking outside is like walking in outside in a 50 mile an hour wind. And, and I didn't understand that because I was, I was always focused on things that allowed me to be within my own bubble. And I would occasionally come out, date, and all of that. But once that I got that introverted date, bubble, the introverted yeah, bubble, I'm back in the bubble, you know. But uh, so yeah, that that was that was crucial in in me getting to the point where uh, I needed to be. But the supernatural shit didn't stop happening. And, and the funny thing is, so so. And I started to get, you know, the, the, the teacher, she, she started to get a little angry about stuff because she was just coming up with a divorce. And, you know, and uh, and so uh, she was divorced and she had two kids. And so uh, when 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 her ex-husband had the kids, she would she would she would drive up to the suburbs and stay with me. Right. Well, I had a picture of my grandmother, my mom's mother in, in the house, in my apartment. Right. It was just sitting there. Right. And so she looked at the picture and she says, who is that? And I'm like, that's that's my grandmother, and uh, that's my mom's mother. She died of uh, diabetes. She had lost both of her legs and and all of that, right? And she didn't say anything there, but she looked very very shocked. 
And she didn't say anything that weekend. So I go back down her her place the, the following weekend. And then she proceeds to tell me that she's been having conversations with my grandmother. Intense conversations. Intense said, conversations about? Like, okay. I says, well, why? She says, well, for, for one, her brother is a paraplegic in a wheelchair. And she says, your grandmother is the spirit guide of my brother. I'm like, okay. From a logic perspective, that makes sense. My grandmother lost her legs. Okay. That's all. I just left it there. Then she proceeds to tell me that because uh, uh, she knew, for some reason, she knew all about my mom had three sisters. She knew, she knew all of that. right? And, and she says, uh, your grandmother uh, because my my mom and my my aunts they were all ministers of music at various churches in Ohio, right? We were we were deeply rooted in in music ministry. Oh, I may know and, some of your family then. I may and, know some of your family. And uh, and so uh, my grandmother in her twenties, she was a minister of music at a church in in Dayton. And my grandfather, the grandfather that died when I was four years old, he was a deacon in the church, right? My grandmother proceeds to tell me that my, my mom's second oldest sister is not the daughter of my grandfather. But she is the daughter of a deacon that sexually assaulted my grandmother. And back then, and, and, my, and my grandmother's telling her this stuff. And, and, I, and I'm like, and, and, and so then I'm like, how am I supposed to take this shit? I've never heard this in my family. Ain't nobody said nothing. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Wow. And so she proceeds to tell me, and, and she had intricate details about my mom's sisters and all of them. And 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 so okay, I left it there. I didn't argue, I didn't, I just took it in. And the next weekend, I was driving to see my pops. Once a weekend, once a month, I drive and, and we spend the weekend and we, we had we, we had gotten together, right? So we're sitting in the den. Now, like I told you, I, he didn't know anything about what I was doing, what the journey that I was on. So we're sitting in the den. Guess what he brings up? What does he bring up? That story. Verbatim. Wow. He brings up that story verbatim and started talking about everything that she talked about a week before. And I still didn't tell mm. him that I that I knew the story already. Mm -hmm. But that was confirmation for me. Yes, it was. And it's like, yeah, that affirms. He just, he just he just started bringing it up. He, he says, you know, your your grandmother, uh, you know, your aunt, your, your aunt, you know, I don't want, I'm not gonna say her name, but because she's passed away and, and all of that. She died of cancer last year. My condolences. But, but uh, but yeah, so I I would, you know, he said, you know, she, you know, her uh, she's not the daughter of your, your grandfather. And I said, I'm thinking, well, what are you talking about? He says, Yeah, you know, it was a deacon in the church that that was uh that, that assaulted your grandmother and, and your grandfather took her in, but it weighed on him and he started drinking heavily and he died of cirrhosis of the liver in 1968. Wow. When I started the book. When you started the book. I started the book at the funeral. Wow. And so when she told wow. when, when he, when, when he told me that, I'm like, okay, I got it. And so when next weekend I'll go back and I tell her and I says, you were right, right? I'm convinced. I don't need any more proof. I'm I'm, I'm thinking to myself, right? So that I night, would say not. I would trust that you would be. Oh, that point. it didn't, didn't stop there. It never stops. Yeah, there, it, it yeah. Never stops. And y'all will see that in the book. Y'all will see that yeah. in the book. And then so, if you so what happened that 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 night, I won't I won't share here, but that is what that that, that is what happened. That was like that's what happened. Supernatural shit happened. 
That's what happened. And y'all will see that in the book as well as if you have the opportunity to meet Lynn, go to the healing environment, have a conversation with him. You will get to even, you know, experience some of the other experiences and journeys that he's taken as well. That's something great about Lynn. I love when Lynn's at the healing environment. That's always my favorite because I get to just sit and talk with Lynn. Because there's so yeah, much and, and, wisdom that you have, as well as just hearing your journey. And, and I've got online courses now. So I'm I'm branching out. We, we, we've got online courses. I, I just taught my first uh, Reiki one and two course yesterday. It was a absolutely powerful young sister. She's a pre-med student. Oh, and, wow. And she came, she says, and I, and I, and I asked her what brought her there. She says, something tells me that there's something more. Woo. Because I, I, I had talked to her mother and I tapped in. Once once they, I talked to her, I can tap in. Yeah. And, 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 and I said, your, your, your daughter has gifts. She is special. Mm-hmm. And 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 that and, and I and there was a course was yesterday, and she is a powerful energetic healer. She reminds me of me when I was getting started because that energy that was flowing through me was so intense. Yeah, and, and we did things and and then and I and I taught a meditation course on Saturday, and so we have online courses that I'm going to branch out and teach because we want to reach as many people as I possibly can. And 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 so we're going to continue to have those online courses available. Uh, just go to the the, heal, the healing environment dot org and sign up and register, and um, and we'll be there. And I'll be there to teach. And we're gonna we're gonna go in deep because my teachings are. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bridge the gap between science and esoteric wisdom. And and so so that's what absolutely and so. Her being my first Reiki student, as a pre-med student, I was able to go deeper into the science aspects of what the energy that she's feeling. Oh, I know and, that was fun. So it it was, was absolutely you. phenomenal. <laughs> and uh, so, but 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 yeah, so that's what I'm doing now, and 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 learning how to channel, and and doing all of that because uh, once I walked away from the job, then everything started happening. And I mean everything. Sounds like everything started opening. Yes, yes, and and it's so funny because, uh, and and now I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this is it's so funny because once I I got the book done, I was doing the book and I was I was getting the book edited and published and all of that stuff. So that takes its own process. You know, last year it was August August time frame, right? Well, well I'm 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 gonna go back to May. It was May, and and I had a a reading from, I don't know if you know Aaron Lyons. The name is very familiar. Yeah, she she's a she's a very powerful channeler and, and psychic, right? So I had a reading with her because the spirit says you need to have a reading. So she started saying, telling me that uh, that things that are happen to me are designed because you're getting prepared to be a channeler, I'm getting prepared because there are entities that are going to be reaching out to you. And she says, they're not ready to reveal themselves at this point. And that was back in May. And so I'm thinking, okay, what is this Galactic Federation? What is this Pleiadians or whatever, right? I'm thinking, okay, oh, all right, let's do this. I'm, I'm just waiting. So I'm sitting here in my office and I get up at two or three in the morning and 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 and, and I get up in pain and all of this stuff. And I'm trying to, you know, I've, 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 I've channeled my breath work so I can transmute and get rid of that pain. But and that's another story of why I was getting up in pain. But I'm getting up in pain and all of that stuff. And so, and then I fall back to sleep. Right? And so, uh, so I get up about an hour or two later and I start my meditation. It's about eight in the morning. I get up, you know, and start my meditation. Well, all of a sudden, in my meditation, I'm going underground. I'm going in these tunnels. I'm going underground. And I know that I just dreamt about going here right when I was falling asleep. I just dreamt it, right? And then all of a sudden, right there in front of me was a female Sasquatch. She was right there in front of me. And I was like, I'm so excited because I was like, this is the entity? Well, all right, let's go. 
I didn't ask names. I didn't do nothing. I was just so excited that 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 she appeared. And of course, the next few times I tried to do it, I couldn't do it. And I had run across a, a really powerful brother. He, he has an Ascension Academy uh, on TikTok, and he teaches the channeling. He teaches you how to channel and to really go into deeper meditations. I knew that I needed to learn how to do that. Do you know his so, name? Yes. It's Clairvoyant Chris. Clairvoyant Chris, you all. Yeah, Clairvoyant Chris on TikTok. And he is a absolutely powerful. That brother took me to a place and got me doing all kinds of stuff. Because I needed, because I had been meditating for almost 20 years, but not at this level. And uh, and so the first, the first, first class, I'm I'm talking to my grandfather. I am I'm meeting my spirit guy. And then I meet Sasquatch. I go down and I meet the Sasquatch, but it wasn't the female. It was a male Sasquatch. Right? And and so we we have two classes. There's two hours on Saturday on each successive Saturday. Second Saturday, he teaches you how to astro project. So I'm astro projecting. I had met this the Sasquatch. I know his name. I know he's got a family. I mean, I'm talking, I'm I'm going back and we're telepathically talking. Right. And and I go down and astro project down. The whole Sasquatch civilization is waiting for me. I could feel they were waiting, you were <laughs> they were waiting and excited for me. And, and it was they are absolutely not like you think they are. There's a whole lot of false narratives out there. They are in no way. I know the history of how they evolved. I know everything. Can you and, give us a little bit of truth before yeah. we close? Can you give us just a little bit of truth, like a falsity that we have been taught about Sasquatches and then the truth about who they really are? So Sasquatches have been around for millions of years, right? And so they were the original hominids here on this earth, right? And and extraterrestrials have been coming here for millions of years. And I got a download. And so when him and I started really talking and I said, what, what's, how did you guys arrive at, at, arrive at being this? And, and so uh, there was like a handshake agreement like a million years ago that the extraterrestrials, the ones that would come, they would come from all different galaxies, all different star systems. And they would, they would, they would, they would take a small percentage of the existing hominid, the Sasquatch, and then use them to evolve into Homo sapiens sapien, us, right? And they would do that. What they didn't count on was they decimated the whole civilization by 50%. And so Sasquatches, so the evolution of them not trusting us, that's why. But they're highly conscious, they're highly evolved, they can teleport themselves from underground to outside. They have the ability to do that. They have the ability to see at night, long distances. I'm talking miles. I've been down to their whole underground civilization. There's a huge crystal that's, that's powering their whole underground civilization. I've met his daughters. He has two twin daughters. And um, it has been, I've taken trips with him. And so my book, my coming book is my, my journey and my travails of the trips that I've taken with him. I'll share one with you. And it's, it's uh, because he's sort of my guide as well as I call him my brother. Right. And, and, and he, is the is the son of the female Sasquatch that I first met. That's why I saw her first, and so she was trying. She 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 sort of sort of wanted to get him aligned with 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 the family business, so to speak, to be the the, the help you know, to 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 bridge the connection between Sasquatch. And so and so, what this book is going to do is tell you a whole lot of truths about who they are. They're a magnificent civilization. And so back in October, 
on TikTok, there was this viral video about this, this one man uh, that went up to, it's called Quartz Creek Drive up in Oregon. And there was this mountain, big, large mountain, this cliff mountain, and there was this huge door on it. it looks like a door carved out in the mountain. And it had a hole at the top of it. And he claimed that there was a giant in there. He saw the giant looking through it. He said he saw a giant, right? So everybody's been, you know, going back and forth, right? So me, I'm, I'm used to, I'm, I've gotten used to channeling him and and, 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 and and I can do point of view from him. I can, I can go inside of him and look through his eyes. I, I mean, it, I can do a whole bunch of stuff now. And so I'm, I'm just having conversations with him. So I says, hey man, what's up with the, Corks Creek, is there a giant up in there? And he says, let's go see. And it shocked me. And so just like this, we're remote viewing, we're outside of that cave, right? And so we go inside, I feel a large presence. I can feel it. And I, and I got really scared, right? And he said, oh, "You did, <laughs> yeah." Oh, I was terrified. And he and, and so we 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 as soon as as soon as fear comes up, it's like they back back out. We, we we back out. And then he says, "There's nothing for you to be afraid of." Then he shows me a past life where I was a giant. Zen. I was about fifty feet tall. I'm looking up. I was a giant. I'm looking up. I saw an asteroid coming towards Earth to destroy, because there, back then there was a lot of giants. And so I saw an asteroid coming towards Earth, and when it hit, in my meditation, I felt a sharp pain in the top of my head. He's telling me, you have nothing to fear because you're a giant. You were a giant. So, so I'm talking about this with Chris, my teacher. I'm like, dude. And so he's had experience with giants. He says the energy with giants are really overwhelming. And so we just got to, he said, and I told him, I said, I got to go back. I got to go back. And I'm assuming that my Sasquatch brother is going to go back with me. And he's like, and so about three days later, I'm saying, like, I'm going back. He's like, I'm not going with you. I'm like, what? I said, okay, I'm going to go. Right? Check this out. And I will share this with you. So I go back up remote view, I go inside, I can feel the presence, I slowly traverse down the, the throughway, right? And then to my right, I could see uh, a large giant-like figure, like slough to the side of the wall. And as I closer I got it, I got there, I felt a sharp pain in my leg. A sharp pain. I was mirroring, he had injured his leg. And so as I walked up, he knew I was there. Now, I had gone through, and I've skipped a lot of things because I've been going through things of the, you know, before that to understand my power. And I would, you know, every night I'm going to spirit school. So I'm going to realize what I have, the powers that I have, to generate what I can do. It's it's like me going to class every night. So I had understood that I could I could heal this. This person. So I go up and, and I tell the says, I'm here to help you. And then I well up all of this light energy in me and I point it towards him. And I, I kept it going towards him until the pain in my leg was gone. And I didn't stick around. Right. And then what I did, I said, okay, I'm going to go back to see how he is. Right. But this time, because I wanted to understand, I wanted to see if my fear was still there without me having to heal, because I had to focus on healing it. So that's the second time I went, I waited about a week to go back. And I went back and I went all the way down. This time he wasn't in the throughway. I had to go all the way down. I took a left and I went down about six feet and this and he went back and this hole open inside the mountain. He was standing there. He had bright red hair. And he was huge. He was healed. And I said, I'm just here to see how you are. I'm not going to encroach on your time. You have a friend in me. If ever you need me, I'll be here. That was my experience with that giant. There are giants around. And I had that experience. And 
and I documented it in my book. But when, when, when my brother said, you have nothing to fear, and he showed me a past life of me, a giant, me being a giant, I knew I had to go back. But but he wasn't going, he said, no, you got to do this for yourself. You can't, I am not going with you. I've been to Antarctica twice. So it's been, my friends were just talking about go Antarctica. Yeah. <laughs> I, go I, 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 I won't tell the story here because you know that you know that's off limits, but it's, yeah. it's in my book. It's in my book. Well, y'all got to get this book. Lynn, as we close, where, where can the next book? Have you yeah. already begun the next book? You said you have, right? Did you say that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm okay. on chapter 13. Oh, I cool. love it. But y'all got to get the first book, Mastering All That I Am. Lynn, as we close, where can they find it? Yes, there it is. There you go. Amazon. It's on Barnes & Noble. Uh, Lynn Gaffney, Mastering All That I Am, A Master's Journey. Uh, it's on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. It's right there. I mean, it's on. It's on. Uh, you you can get it on uh, paperback, or you can get it on. Uh, uh, Hardback. Just, uh, no. Oh, uh, uh, Kindle. 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 Yes. Yes. I and the audio it. audio version will come be coming out in another couple of months. So it'll be the audio version will come out in a couple of months. But but yes. Yeah. So Are you right going to be the narrator? Are you narrating? No, I'm not narrating. Yeah, no, that's right. I hear you. Well, y'all will also have it linked in the bio as well, where you can get the book. Lynn, thank you again for thank coming you. on Life Verbs podcast. Absolutely, it's my pleasure, Zan. Anytime you need me, I'm here. Thank you. I got so stories much. for you, so we we can all I can all, we can always share. We can go share experiences because I've got them. Well, I know you do. I know you do.